Hi, I'm Tavi Halperin presenting our paper, Endless Loops. This is a joint work from our team at Lightrix. Lightrix is an Israeli unicorn focusing on computer vision and image processing apps for mobile. The research was conducted in collaboration with OHAD from the IDC. We created an algorithm that can take a still image and automatically create motion in specific areas the user wants to animate. This creates a looping video from any still image. Our method produces looping videos instantly on a mobile device, allowing users to experiment with their own photos. A looping video is called a cinemagraph. Previous works created cinemagraphs from video input, meaning that they use video input and usually freeze areas in the recorded video in a way that creates a surreal effect. It requires production capabilities with specific recording conditions and careful processing to make the cinemagraph loop seamlessly. And since it uses real video footage, it is limited to only natural movement. Another approach requires only a single image to create a cinemagraph by training the network on a large data set of videos. Therefore, like the previous approach, this method can only produce natural motion, which it saw during training. It creates photorealistic videos, but it is limited to fluid elements and natural motion, such as, for example, falling waterfalls, because those are the videos that it used for training. We wanted to create motion in any image, not limited to specific image domains or to motion types. The learning approach does not fit to our goals because we cannot collect real footage of non realistic motion. Our first approach was to do that manually. An early version of our app created motion by letting users manually indicate sparse motion vectors. It allowed to freely move any area in an image with fine-grained control. The app gained a lot of popularity with 300,000 monthly active users. Even though for relatively simple motion fields, the app required a reasonable amount of manual work, for more complex images and elaborate motion, it required high precision and long session to create plausible results. Here we show a fast forward by a factor of 10 of the process of adding motion to a rather complex image. We wanted to build a system that keeps the exp expressive power and interactivity of this app, but eliminates the tedious work. So our goal was to turn cinemagraph creation into an automatic method but it was also critical to us to keep it at interactive running times. Our key insight here was that we can first quickly estimate rough motion in 1D and later on refine that initial estimate in 2D in order to assign a motion vector to every pixel and in that way to create the video. This setup balances accuracy and speed. Now let's dive deeper starting with the 1D step. In this step, we find repetitions along a band of pixels, which we sample according to the user input from the image. We construct a self-similarity matrix of the band and use dynamic programming to find the shortest path in that matrix for a rough estimate of the repetitive structure of the image. The 1D computation is fast, and in some cases, it can even be used as is, with all pixels moving in exactly the same angle and almost the same magnitude. But usually, we would like to have more flexibility, so the motion will align better with the structure of the image. We want the motion to be able to vary both in magnitude and in angle, but at the same time to keep it smooth, to avoid sharp changes in the motion field. We get that flexibility using our second step, which works in 2D and predicts a dense per pixel motion field. In this step, we solve an optimization problem to assign the motion to every pixel. The tool we used is Dense Conditional Random Field, or CRF in short, that assigns labels to pixels. In our case, the labels are motion vectors, and the CRF minimizes an objective, consists of data and smoothness terms. The label of a pixel indicates its tar target pixel. 
it's xi here. The data term is the perceptual similarity between the image at a given pixel and its target according to the label xi. We break the smoothness term into angular and magnitude similarity of labels of neighboring pixels, xi and xj. This formulation allows us to refine the motion field given an initial estimate from the previous step. So the rough CRF output is still quite noisy. And for performance reasons, we apply the CRF on a low resolution of the image. So to get a high resolution smooth and smooth motion field, we filter and upsample the CRF, the CRF output in order to create the video in the full resolution of the image. Now we want to generate the video. To do that, we incrementally warp the image according to the motion field. We generate a sequence of frames. Each frame is warped slightly more than the previous one, up to the last one, which is warped with the full magnitude of the motion field. The last frame is very similar to the original one because it follows the pattern of the image, but it's not exactly the same. Thus, looping the video creates visible jumps. To generate a seamlessly looping result, we use two videos actually. The first one is the generated output, and the second one is a shifted version of that same output. We alpha blend the two videos across time to generate the final result so that the jumps will not be visible. We don't want surrounding pixels to be pulled into the moving area. So we replace them by extending the pattern outwards. Notice how now the bases of the arrows touch the extended building pattern and not unrelated pixels of sky or sand. If we don't extend the pattern, notice how the sky and sand bleed onto the animated region. Our result on the right has no bleeding artifacts. So to recap, we start from an input photo mask and direction, detect 1D self similarity, and refine it to 2D via a CRF formulation. And then we use the resulting warp field to generate a seamlessly looping video. In some cases, the user wants multiple areas to move, or sometimes to create more complex motion. In such cases, we break the moving area according to the number of direction the use, directions the user specifies and apply the algorithm to each one of them individually. We can also splice a video with motion. We compute the motion on a single frame and apply it on the same area even when it moves inside the video. We implemented our algorithm as a mobile application available for download and to play with. We removed the complexity of the previous UI and the new app contains only two tools, one for indicating the moving areas and the other to point at the desired direction of motion. Now let's look at some results.
compared ourselves to the learning-based work of Holinsky et al. that generates looping videos of fluid elements. Their work produces photorealistic results on images of the kind of scenes their method was trained for. We achieve results of similar quality without using any video to train. We also conducted a user study to compare the results visually. For videos with fluid elements, such as waterfalls, our method was better than the method of Android AL and on par with the method of Holinsky et AL, which is specifically tailored to these types of input. On a more diverse set of inputs, user prefer users preferred our method over all other methods. We also, our method runs 10 to 20 times faster than previous methods while running on mobile on the CPU. It also does not require any video for training. Our future challenges mainly include complex motion. For example, strong projection, meaning that the magnitude of the motion changes rapidly. Another challenge is a pattern that varies strongly. For example, here, the stripes spread out differently on top than on the bottom. So when different areas have different, have very different structure, the algorithm struggles to latch on the pattern. In practice, the user can still walk around it with multiple instructions. Another important challenge is rotations. Our algorithm works with multiple directions and can generate circular motion but it is still currently requires the user to carefully indicate directions around the axis of rotation. We believe that to get this level of flexibility, a learning-based method is required. We can't solve it naively with that data because we can't collect data for non-realistic motion, but we are currently working our way around it by designing losses for training a network. That's all. Thank you for listening. We invite you to download our app and start creating your own motion loops.